Welcome into the M1 Finance account. Anybody can benefit from this message here to understand what I'm doing now and why. We're about 10% off, and this is the first uh, mark where I'll start dabbling in the market, and uh, I will share that to dabble with you here uh, just to kind of understand. I've been fairly patient since last November of 2021. Uh, I've monitored markets closely and where I think the focus has moved away from uh, inflation fears um, and moved more toward the geopolitical risk, uh, I do think that uh, this uh, quick drawdown in the market has uh, provided some new strategic areas of focus. And if I was just going to rattle them off to you, I'd say healthcare and financials right smack at the top. And then energy continues to be an area of focus where I think we'll probably get um, some panic buying going into it. I've owned energy throughout the, the last five years. So um, really not a big deal for me. I'm just going to continue to own the sector and, and, and profit from it. But it is time. Uh, the theme in this video is going to be some uh, new strategic positions in 12 stocks. I'm going to declare those to you guys. Um, I'm also doing uh, about $36 cost average buys and M1 Finance allows this to happen. Uh, I just want to bring your attention here to the uh, market performance and net flow into the portfolio. These are hard dollars that are contributed into this portfolio here at 18.5. Uh, market gains at just over 9,000, so fantastic uh, work here. Um, and then some earned dividends, which just go up incrementally. This portfolio is crazy. I've had about 80 stocks in this portfolio and it's uh, I'm hard pressed to not get a dividend every day I you know it seems like every day every other day or so I'll get uh, d dividends from from a few bucks all the way up to you know 15 16 18 bucks it just it just varies but there's so many dig dividend paying stocks in this portfolio strategic goal over this bucket is to align um, those with that strategic goal of, of seeking out one of the four D's that I believe is one of the uh, real pillars in investing. I mean, should I dare and say it a guarantee? Uh, and for you guys that um, you know choose to consume this content, you can really benefit from understanding my philosophy on that. And for those patrons out there that do not have M1 Finance, it doesn't mean that you can't uh, sit back and relax and enjoy my philosophy on, on why I'm entering into these companies at this particular time off here about 10%. Um, this is the time when I feel like um, I want to make my first strategic stab. Um, I'll continue to dollar cost average the market, but this is a strategic buy, um, and I'm here to share that strategic buy with you. So here you can see the portfolio is just kind of leveled off and, and slightly trending to the right here. No real crazy downturn values held up um, quite well. Actually, they, they've sold off, but, but they've held up because I, I was sitting on such nice gains in this portfolio. I think that it just demonstrates the strength of dividend investing here and, and holding really good companies through this volatility. Um, you can see here how the sectors have fared. Uh, these I've got pieced through. I do omit real estate from this portfolio for obvious reasons. I hold real estate in other capacities and other accounts, uh, much larger positions and uh, some of my favorite REITs in, in my Roth IRA. I, I, this is a taxable brokerage account. Um, so I, I don't retain uh, real estate in here, but here's the other 10 sectors that I do retain here. Um, but um, here's the scheduled buys tomorrow, 48 total buys, almost 50 stocks uh, that we're putting a, a strategic inject in the market. And this is a far cry from what everybody's doing right now, um, you know, panicking and, 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 you know, bitching about the gas prices and, you know, panicking and, and, and nobody's really talking about put, putting a strategic, non-emotional um, neutral application to this market. Could it continue to go down? Yeah, maybe. Uh, I, I don't I don't play that game. Um, this is not a game. Um, this is to uh, abide by a series of rules that I believe in to buy at the first strategic 10% down. Um, could this be ill-timed? Yeah, odds are probably yeah. Uh, I don't believe in being able to time the market, so I don't I don't try to do that. Uh, I make strong moves in the market, and this is indi indica indicative of just that. And that's a strong move in the market. So let's cruise through here, and I'll do you guys a favor, and I will separate um, just a, a little over five of inflows into this. I will separate the new strategic positions in this portfolio um, from the dollar cost average buys. Uh, so two of the four triple Ds, uh, dr uh, the DRIP program and diversification being the other two, um, I do not seek out uh, diversification in this portfolio, albeit 
um, I do hold a lot of holdings in this portfolio. This will boost it up close to 100 holdings in this dividend portfolio, and I think it's awesome. It is a great way to invest, um, and I do have strategic visions down the road of this portfolio getting up to 100, 100.5 quarter million dollars um, and still holding all of these same assets and, and uh, strategically polishing the edges as we grow and, and, and we uh, mature the portfolio going forward here. But Cummins, uh, leading off the list here, Cummins is fabulous, uh, just took over uh, Meritor here in a, in a really a, a, an awesome deal, you know, there's a $3 billion deal. So it's huge. Uh, another strategic kind of in there uh, with the EV market. I think Cummins will benefit from its be uh, its relationship with with Hylion as Hylion comes into uh, becoming more of a dominant player in the EV space. I think it's going to be great to have some exposures to Cummins. Uh, Cummins is a buy rating across the board, pays a nice dividend, fits nicely in the portfolio. Uh, Emerson Electric here will be a newly established position. Uh, and then right below it, UNH I've had in the portfolio, I've had a small position, but this actually rounds out that existing uh, uh, position that I started many, many months ago in United Health. Um, this will kind of re-solidify that position there, uh, but uh, that's a dollar cost average buy. And then uh, Sanofi, uh, the only healthcare addition to this portfolio that I've got. Um, I loved what I saw here in Sanofi. It was uh, fabulous. Um, it is a, a global uh, uh, provider um, in the healthcare sp space. Um, Gilead was the other one that I was looking at, and I opted not to buy that. So Sanofi took took the cake here as being the loan financials here. So we've got Cummins, Emerson, Electric, Sanofi uh, as the new positions. And I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to cherry pick the new positions for you. Uh, U.S. Bank Corps is a new position. Uh, British Petroleum, uh, excuse me, British American Tobacco, BTI. Um, is a new position. Uh, Kellogg Company uh, is a new position. I'm just ecstatic to own all these. Unilever is an absolute screaming buy right now. One of the few in the staple space that I did buy along with Kellogg. Um, so I'm super stoked on that. Uh, I did embolden the financial section here uh, and, and added my fourth Canadian bank here. Um, and, and this is one that uh, really was under my radar uh, and one that I came across in my research, and that's Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, uh, CM, the ticker symbol being there. Um, so I'm glad to add that in and embolden. I think financials are going to outperform. Interest rates going up are good for both staples and financials. It cost of goods go up. Profits go up for companies. Uh, cost of capital uh, will also increase, increase and benefit the financials that have been really kind of put to sleep over the last, let's be real, 10 years uh, over this bull market where the cost of capital has been relatively light. So the banks will profit from that, but this is kind of a hybrid play here to get some exposure in the uh, in the Canadian markets here. Uh, Di uh, Diageo was one that I've never owned. This is a new position, newly established in the Staples uh, category, so fantastic to round out that existing space. Um, and then I, I broke into insurance. Uh, I think along with the financials, I think these insurers are going to do really well um, in this newly established environment with uh, a little bit higher interest rates. I think AIG and MetLife, uh, as well as, uh, I think I added some Aflac here. I might have left Aflac out of it. Yes, I did. So those are the two insurers that I added in there, and then PNC Financial Group. So just, just kind of a recap here. Sanofi, uh, Cummins, Inc., Emerson Electric, uh, United uh, U.S. Bank Corps, uh, BTI, which is British American Tobacco, uh, Kellogg Company, Unilever, uh, Canadian Imperial, Diageo, AIG, MetLife, and PNC. That rounds out the 12 strategic buys uh, on this list here. So I, I'm, I'm throwing it at you here quick. You guys know I don't do the three stock picks of the month anymore. Why? Because it's a complete and utter waste of people's time. Um, these are real dollars that are flowing into this account. First thing tomorrow, um, I'm hoping for a down market tomorrow, as obviously I'm putting a pretty good infusion uh, to the market. Uh, knowing my luck, the, the market will be up pre-market tomorrow, a 1,000 points, and I'll buy all these at high. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, strong moves in the market are, are what will uh, overcome now, I do want to go through the list of strategic dollar cost average buys. So you're getting a double whammy in this video. And if you pay attention, you'll see kind of where where my, my interest lies here. Uh, UNH 
uh, is the first strategic buy on an existing position. Remember, these are positions that were held before, and these will help embolden these. Visa, Merck, Cisco Systems, Intel, Disney, McDonald's. These are all previously owned positions. Home Depot, IBM, MasterCard. Look at that, Texas Instruments. Nice to see that uh, getting a little bit of love right there. Materials is really down right now. Um, and I, I think it's nice to see that these flow into two of my very favorite uh, materials uh, as materials taking it on the chin here. And I think materials is, is just a fabulous sector to be in, in, in Lind and Air uh, Products and Chemicals, Inc., APD. Uh, Next era in the utility sector, Lowe's, Sherwin-Williams, again, in the material sector, uh, Comcast, Starbucks, Leggett and Platt in discretionary, uh, Nike, AT&T, AMD, Duke, and Southern Company, my two staples there in utilities, uh, TJ Maxx, Verizon, uh, Broadcom Inc. in the chip space, uh, Citigroup, again, nice to see a little emboldened there in the financial sector, Dominion also, so utilities getting a lot of love here on this dollar cost average initiative, JP Morgan, more love for materials in DuPont and Dow. Uh, and UPS and Industrials, T-Mobile, FedEx, and finally Enbridge, which is getting just a little bit of love in energy. You'll notice here that there's not a lot of buys in energy because energy it has just run away from itself in this portfolio. It's just absolutely crazy overweight, and I'll show you what I mean here. When we go into, you guys remember, energy used to be way down the list. Obviously, in the downturn, it was below 6%. Now it's crept up to 7.4, and we're up 6.93. This just goes to show the funding that goes into these uh, out-of-favor sectors when they are indeed out-of-favor. Um, we can look at them now and say, man, it's nice to have been there and done that and look at us now. Um, we're just killing it. So to see these uh, inflows come into this portfolio is going to just be absolutely fabulous. Remember, the takeaway here is to, to, to stay strong on a plan. Um, these stocks that I've just declared to you, there'd be 48 buys, 12 are new positions, 36 are existing positions along two very simple themes that anybody can resonate with. And that is the dollar cost average uh, theme into existing positions and finally looking to be a little bit opportunistic on this market and take some positions in some stocks uh, that have been uh, uh, really beat down over the last four or so months. Two, especially in 22 here, guys. With that, we'll conclude the video.